welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. On the 14th of October 2025, support for Windows 10 will come to an end. This means that Windows 10 will no longer receive security updates and Microsoft will no longer offer technical support. At this time, Windows 10 users are likely to fall into one of three categories. Firstly, there may be some people with a computer that supports Windows 11 and who want to upgrade to it. Although, to be honest, anybody who can and wants to upgrade to Windows 11 will probably have done so already. Secondly, there will be people with a computer that supports Windows 11 but who do not want to upgrade to it. And thirdly, there will be a very large number of people with a computer that does not officially support Windows 11 and who Microsoft believes should buy a new computer. By October the 14th, 2025, users in the second and third categories will have to make a decision. And in the spirit of being prepared, let's run through the potential options. Right, here we are in Windows 10, which will continue to work just fine after the 14th of October 2025. Because of this, some users, consciously or otherwise, may decide to do nothing. However, if you use Windows 10 online, and in particular for things like e-banking and online shopping, then doing so without security updates will be unwise. Now, I'm aware that some people do argue that security updates from Microsoft are unnecessary if you run good antivirus and broader anti-malware software. However, this is simply untrue, as operating system security updates and antivirus and broader anti-malware software do not do the same thing. Specifically, security updates patch flaws in an operating system that are discovered after it's been released and which could be exploited by hackers. Meanwhile, antivirus and broader anti-malware applications detect viruses and other malware and prevent them from running. And whilst this may include code that exploits security flaws in an operating system, this will not always be the case. So, for effective security, all versions of Windows do require Microsoft security updates, regardless of what antivirus and broader anti-malware software is installed. Given what I've just said, for most users, doing nothing will not be a wise strategy. However, it is a viable option if you only run Windows 10 offline. And, in turn, a second perfectly reasonable strategy for any computer running Windows 10 after October the 14th, 2025, will be to remove its connection to the internet. However, fairly obviously, this is not going to be a viable option for most users. So, what can most users do? Well, once support ends, Microsoft has announced that it will sell extended security updates, or ESUs, that will keep Windows 10 secure for up to three years. And, unlike with previous versions of Windows, ESUs will be available not just to enterprise customers, but also to education and home users. The price of ESUs will double every year, and different prices will be charged to different customer groups. Specifically, for those with an educational Windows 10 license, ESUs will be $1 in year one, rising to $4 in year three. However, for commercial customers, ESUs will be $61 in the first year, with the annual doubling bringing the three-year price per computer to $427. So, what will be the price of ESUs for home users? Well, sadly, at the time of uploading this video, on October the 12th, 2024, Microsoft has yet to release this information. On its website, over here, it simply states that final pricing and enrolment conditions will be made available closer to the October 2025 date for the end of support. There's then a reference to another page, and if we go across to that page and scroll around, quite a bit we find this, where it tells us that 
If you are an individual consumer or an organization who elects to continue using Windows 10 after support ends, you will have the option of enrolling your PC in the paid extended security updates program. More details, including pricing, will be provided at a later date. Clearly, the price that Microsoft chooses will matter a great deal, not least as it may determine the fate of millions of perfectly good computers. And so, when this information does become available, I will add it to the video description and also post it here in a pinned comment. Hopefully, the ESU price for home users will be close to that for education, which would make extended security updates the best option for many computers, as well as generating Microsoft a very considerable income. Now, just to throw a curveball into the mix, it's interesting to note that companies other than Microsoft are planning to sell their own security updates. Most notably, Acros Security claims that its service called Zero Patch will security adopt Windows 10 version 22H2 and provide critical security patches for it for at least five more years. The price for Zero Patch for individual users is currently €24.95 Euros plus taxes per computer for a yearly subscription, which is about $27.90 or £21. For some time, Zero Patch has been offering its service for other out of support Windows versions, including Windows 7. It also claims that since Windows 7 support ended in January 2020, over 70 publicly known critical vulnerabilities have been discovered, which Zero Patch is now providing protection for. Personally, I'm a bit skeptical that a third party can patch a Microsoft operating system as well as Microsoft. However, services like Zero Patch may be worth considering when Windows 10 support comes to an end. Sticking with curveballs, there are versions of Windows 10 that are supported beyond October 2025. These come from the Enterprise Long-Term Servicing Channel, or LTSC, with Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC 2021 being supported until January 12, 2027. Meanwhile, Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC 2019 has extended support until January 9, 2029. So, what are these LTSC versions of Windows 10? Well, as Microsoft explains on this page, the long-term servicing channel is designed for Windows 10 devices and use cases where the key requirement is that functionality and features don't change over time. Examples include medical systems, industrial process controllers, and air traffic control devices. Windows 10 LTSC versions are only legitimately available in volume licensing from Microsoft. However, if you do a bit of web searching, you may come across other vendors who are selling Windows 10 LTSC license keys. Although, if you do choose to go this route, be very careful to make sure that you download a legitimate ISO file. Windows 11 is sadly not officially supported on many computers. And if your computer is one of them, you've probably had this screen pop up to tell you that it's not eligible to upgrade. In addition, if in Windows 10 we go to Windows Update, there's a similar message about not meeting the system requirements for Windows 11. This is also not uncommon, with Canalys estimating that there are 240 million perfectly good computers in the same position. The basic system requirements for Windows 11 are a 1 GHz 64-bit dual-core processor, 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of storage and most computers currently running Windows 10 will either meet this requirement or could easily be upgraded by adding more RAM. However, to run Windows 11, Microsoft also requires a secure boot capable UEFI and trusted platform module 2.0, as well as the processor to be on a compatible list. 
these completely artificial requirements have no impact on how well Windows 11 will run. And, depending on your point of view, they were either put in place to improve security, or because Microsoft wants tens of millions of computers to go into landfill. At the start of installation, Windows 11 checks to see if a PC is compatible, and will not continue if it doesn't meet Microsoft's requirements. Fortunately, however, as I've demonstrated in another video, it is possible to use a range of methods to get around the checks and to install Windows 11 on any computer that meets its basic minimum hardware requirements. Microsoft even documents one such method on its own website, if with a warning that it's not recommended. And it should be noted that while some computers can be directly upgraded from Windows 10 to Windows 11 via such hacks, older hardware will need a clean install. For organisations and others who legally need to run an officially supported operating system, unofficially upgrading to Windows 11 is not an option. But for many home users, an unofficial Windows 11 install may be a perfectly viable option. Experience over the past two years indicates that security and other basic updates will be received just fine. However, there will be no feature updates to the next version of Windows 11. And so, to maintain security updates, a reinstall roughly once a year may be required. So, what if you don't like the options so far? Well, in this instance, you'll have to install another operating system. And here I would suggest there are two key alternatives, the first of which is Linux. Right now, we're running Linux Mint, which, as you can see, has a similar layout to Windows 10, which can make for an easy transition. You may also wish to try other popular Linux distributions, including Zorin OS, Ubuntu, Debian, Pop! OS, Manjaro, MX Linux, or Fedora. And if you're thinking of trying Linux, do take a look at my recent video, Switching to Linux, A Beginner's Guide. It's important to note that Linux is not a direct replacement for Windows and will not natively run Windows applications. So, if you choose to switch from Windows 10 to Linux, you'll probably need to learn some new software. However, with many Microsoft and other programs now offering a cloud alternative that will run in Linux, this is not as difficult as it used to be. 2025 could indeed be a great year for desktop Linux if we're not going to abandon tens of millions of perfectly good computers. If you choose to install another operating system, a second option is something based on Chromium OS. This is the open source foundation of the Chrome OS operating system used on Google Chromebooks. However, there are also versions that you can install on many PCs and laptops. The first is Chrome OS Flex, which is what we're running here. And this is a really great cloud operating system from Google and can be easily upgraded to run Linux applications, as I've covered in another video. The second alternative is FidoS, which I've covered very recently on the channel. And this looks very similar to Chrome OS Flex, as we can see, and it can also run Android as well as Linux applications. Now, whether Chrome OS Flex or FidoS are a credible alternative to Windows 10 will depend on what you want to use your computer for. But if you just need to get online and to run basic Office and media applications, then Chrome OS Flex or FidoS may be a better alternative to Windows 10 than Linux. Finally, I should note that even more alternative operating systems are available. Chief amongst these are FreeBSD, which comes in many variants, such as GhostBSD, which is what we're running here. And if you're feeling really adventurous, you could try Haiku. And probably by October 2025, Harmony OS will also be available for PC. And if it is, I'll have reviewed it on this channel.
According to StatCounter, in September 2024, the desktop Windows version market share was just under 63% for Windows 10 and just over 33% for Windows 11. And so, by October the 14th, 2025, the majority of current Windows users will have to make a decision. Personally, I still don't know what I'm going to do with my laptop. Will I buy an extended security update? Depends on the price. Will I install Linux? Probably, those are my, my two considered options. But what about you? What are you going to do when Windows 10 support comes to an end? Please let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.